better leave that alone right now. I better leave that alone right now. Thank you, Lord. Nothing like the praise of God. To thank Him for all that He has done. Is it isn't too much to ask if you can look around and tell somebody that He's been good to me?
those of you that can stand, would you please stand with me for the reading of God's Word? This morning's scripture is our communion scripture. It will come from 1 Corinthians, the 11th chapter, beginning in the 23rd verse to the 34th verse. And it reads as follows. For I have received of the Lord, and which also I deliver unto you. At the same night, and when Jesus was betrayed, he took bread, and he had given thanks, and he drank it, and said, Take ye, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after the same manner, also, he took the cup, and when he had said, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do you as often in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat of this bread, and drink of the cup of the Lord, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat of that bread, and drink of this cup, Unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But will a man examine himself? So when he eat and drink of that cup, he eateth and drinketh. Unworthily, he eateth and drinketh the invasion to himself, not deserting the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak. And sent me among you, and be deceived. For if we judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. <clears throat> so, wherefore, my brother, when we come together to eat, tarry one for another. And if any man hunger, let him eat at home, that you not come together unto condemnation. And the rest will I put in order when I come. You may be seated. Such is the reading of 1 Corinthians 11, chapter, the 23rd to the 34th verse. May God have a blessing to the readers and the hearers and the doers of his precious word.
trusting God in tough times. I need about 54 to pray for me. You can't live this experience called life without having some things happen. Things you don't like, things you don't want, things you don't ask for, things you don't feel you need. But we don't get to fill out a pre-wish list of what we want to happen and we don't get to decide what we get to dodge or escape. For those of us that have been a while, alive for a while, we know that tragedy, trials, and trouble are common to a, a common experiences of all of us. We realize and should know by now that no one has the option of avoiding them because there are no options. The pain and the predicament that accompany many of these experiences leave us in unwanted places, leave us with hurt and pain in our hearts, and we end up many times asking, where is God? People, people want to know, where is God when they are in pain? Where, where did he go when I'm in pain? Where, where is God at when, when, when I hurt? How, how could he let this happen to me? Is he just somewhere watching Wow, you see me wade through what it is that I'm going through. Maybe that's, maybe that's where you are today. Maybe you're asking that same question. God, where are you? Doesn't he see my struggle? How can he let this happen to me? How can he let this happen in my family? And can I tell you that these are questions, and these are questions that flood our minds while we are clueless, even to knowing the answer or if we will ever get the answer. Lord, help today. Can I encourage you, beloved? While you may find yourself entrenched, while you may find yourself surrounded by or even avalanched with matters that are out of control, that look to be circumstances that you cannot navigate your way through, maybe you're wrestling with questions that you can't answer, I need you to take heart today in knowing this. Because we never know what tomorrow holds, but there's one thing that we do know, and I believe we've got some children in here, that we know who holds tomorrow, but not only does he hold tomorrow, he's in control of a tomorrow that hasn't shown up yet. We know that he is in control of everything that's going to happen in the tomorrow of our lives. Can I share with you, though your questions may be questions you can't answer, but take Take, take confidence in knowing that your questions are never beyond God's ability to answer. And your situation is never out of the ability of God to handle. I'm so glad that what I can't handle, God can. Yeah. I'm so glad that what money can't buy, what education can't get me out of, God can. Yeah. And this is where the psalmist found himself. And when you look at it, if you deal with the superscription, it talks about the song of Korah. Korah was the choir master. Korah was like Sister Belsa who would lead out the choir singing. And just to lead out in singing don't mean that you lead yourself out of suffering. Just because you can lead in a soul does not mean that trial and affliction doesn't have your name on it. Hello in here, somebody. It is one thing to talk about God is a way maker. God is a storm stealer. God will help you. That's when you're talking to somebody else in their trouble, in their time of problem. But what do you say about him when it walks in your family? Is he as much God to you then as he is when you're subscribing him to somebody else? And it's amazing that we know for sure that this song is unique. Unique from the standpoint that it powerfully and effectively conveys the truth of the message. But there's an underlying message, and it's simply this, that no matter, no matter where you find yourself, no matter what seat you feel that you're sitting in today, you may feel that you are like Peter Marsh, you're sitting in the dejected rows of a melancholy experience with a shawl draped around your shoulder. But know this today, that no matter what life brings, that we have a God on our side. 
Thank you today. I, I know it. I, I wonder, anybody else? Oh, uh, you ought not be you now to say that he's with me. We got a God that keeps us. And it's amazing how the psalm holds out the promise that, that there is, not might, could be, but there is a day coming. There's a time coming. When there will be a moment or moments of question. Somebody is sitting there right now. Somebody got through it last week. Somebody say, I've been there last month. Somebody will say, I've been there more times than I got fingers and toes. There are some moments that all of us are going to have. With questions and prayers that are beyond our ability to control or to change. Thank God today that he doesn't allow us to live in a utopia. If you ever did your geography and you've ever studied the Mojave Desert, you know that all that is there is just sand for miles across the breadth and the width. Sand. Might be a cactus plant every now and then. One of the reasons why it's just sand is because very little rain falls. I'm talking about today. Could God be using the rainfall in your life to cultivate some vegetation that would have never been there had you not gone through? I'm talking to somebody who has said that, 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 that the reason why my prayer life is like it is is because I, I know, what it, know what it means to call it. Yes. And not just call them, but I know who I'm talking to. Yeah. You know, all of us in here are going to be at a place where things will be out of our control. If it were left up to us, we'd live utopia lives. When they have no trouble, when they have no issues, uh, sorry to tell you, if you don't know by now, that ain't real. And, and it ain't always about the devil. And it ain't always about you. I believe that God has a will. And God determines what he wants to happen, when it happens, what time it happens, what day it happens, and who it happens to, and how long it happens. But, but I do believe, Brother Davis, I, I hear the prophet Isaiah whispering in my ear, saying, but they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. Not on wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Wait, I say on the Lord, and be of good courage, and he will strengthen your heart. And, and, and I say to all of us today, praise God today, that what looks like is out of control for us, I thank God, he's got his eye on the thermostat and his hand on the barometer. Yeah. That no matter how hot it gets, he can always control the temperature. None of us, no problem is ever beyond the powerful presence of the Lord. And so from this one verse, I believe that, 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 there's, that, that there's a dual, dual reality that if we take heart, it'll help us to trust God in tough times. Are you ready? First and most important thing at the very beginning of the psalm is that there's a statement made, which points us to the fact of God's protection. It's right there. God is, not might, not could be, not ought to be. As my dear friend, Dr. Robert Smith Jr., uh, preaching professor of Beeson University at Sanford University in Alabama would say, right there we get to see a small picture of the isness of God. Yeah, yeah. God makes it his business to be the personal protector and protection of the righteous. You, you ought to be shouting right there. That no matter what comes, it has to get his approval. No matter what form it comes in, nothing gets by it. You ought to lift your head today. That God makes it his business to be your and my personal protector. And protection, not just for anybody. But for the righteous. Did you hear that? This verse affirms that God is all powerful. Yes. 
this is the foundation that the psalmist builds on, and everything else flows from this point because it's established on this divine fact. Because apart from this truth, we don't have a leg to stand on, we don't have nothing to support us, we don't have nothing to sustain us. Because the strength of other folk, it's timely. It ain't timeless. Oh, they're going to get old just like us. They get weak just like we do. They will struggle just like we will. But that ain't what the Psalms are saying about God. Yes, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. Praise his holy name. It's amazing. The text opens by identifying the person who protects us. But looking at the text, watch this. God is mentioned as that person and rightfully so. Not your money, not your education, not your family, not your friends. God. He alone is in a category all by himself. In a category that is unparalleled and unequal. Who do you compare me to? Nobody will know. He said, to whom will you liken me to? God is, God has always been, and God will always be powerful. In fact, about it, the very name of God in this verse supports this fact. God isn't just almighty because the intensity of his name says that he is very mighty. He is intensely almighty. Now, I do have, I'm in Bible country, Genesis chapter 1 and verse 1 confirms and makes a statement about him that he made everything out of nothing. That statement in the very first beginning, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, that word created bara gives us the ex nihilo of God's power out of nothing, no pre-existing material. Imagine, God can make a bitch without needing a tree. Oh yes he can. God can make skies. God can make flowers and daffodils and babbling books and meandering streams. And he doesn't need any pre-existing material. Ain't that awesome? And if God can do that, so proud to bring all of that out of nothing, imagine what he can do with your situation. Hello in here. Yeah, yeah, y'all don't know a shout stop when you hear it. You don't have to feel like a bull rush in the morning or live like a weeping willow. Because if God is on your side, let me ask this as we just don't talk to them. Who was it that helped you when you felt like you couldn't make it? Am I talking to somebody? Have you ever had some moments when pain seemed to have been working? All it wanted to, doctors and medicine couldn't do it. But look at what God did. Started out when you couldn't get a good night's sleep, and before you know it, your alarm was waking you up the next day. How did you do it? God did. Because God wanted to show us any of these both of us being up all night. I'll be up all night. I'll manage your pain. I'll take care of you. I'll see you through your sleep and your slumber. I'll make sure the house don't burn up or blow up while you're in it. I'll make sure that though you woke up delayed in pain, you'll wake up pain free. Am I talking? Bless his holy name. Psalms begin to set the stage because everything that comes after it makes a very clear and absolute statement that God and God alone is powerful. Look at the verse with me, if you don't mind, because the verse says that God is, not that he was. It didn't say that he could be, it didn't say he should be, but that he is. Can I just take you to school for a second? Because the present tense of the bird makes a bold statement that God is present all the time. Doesn't take no days off. Every now and then I chuckle with some of them, the, the, the good folk of our church and say, I need them and they say, Reverend, you go ahead and take as many as you need and I just keep showing back up. I'm so glad that I ain't never asked God to take a day off from me. That's why I say I need thee every hour. Hell on here. I think he has, I thought he had some children in here. Let me ask you this. How far would you make it if God decided to leave you to yourself? All we be done for. Don't worry about answering. I answer for all of us. But thank God that He doesn't take a day out. That He's always, always with us. Yes. In every day of our lives, the fact of Scripture declares that God is all powerful. Never to default, never to decrease in power at any time. And think about the confidence that ought to give us. Think about the hope that ought to be provided for us. 
Think about the peace that ought to instill in us. Yes, to know that God has all power is to also say that he is in, he can be feeling control of everything, everywhere, all the time. To know that God has all power, let me move the message, to put fears to flight because there's nobody else that's got power like he has. Nobody else is present everywhere at the same time like he is. You ain't got to send God nowhere. You insult God. God go to the hospital and already there. God go to join already there. I'm a global God. God, God is so big, so immense, the immensity, the largeness of God. Almost find God running into his own self. Yes, remember, beloved, the next time trouble and trial and testing shows up in your life, can I encourage you to lean on that with faith? But also know that the truth of God's word has and continues to be demonstrated in your life and mine. Yes, but there's more. Can I show it to you? Because the psalmist makes another statement about God. He's our protector. He ain't just present. He ain't just looking. He's doing something. He is our refuge. Can I walk through this real quickly? It's amazing how the use of the word refuge here describes a place of safety and security. Let me say it one more time. God is not just a person who protects, but he's also the person that I run to for safety and security. Got some stuff chasing me, but it, 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 it'll stop once I run to him. Yeah, he, he, he shields me. Yeah, Joel, uh, come on, I need to read this because they don't believe that I'm telling the truth. Uh, remember when that episode that was taking place in Job chapter 1, when the angels assembled themselves together? I thought somebody was going to help me preach today. And, 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 and Satan had a conversation with God, and God started bragging on it. Have you considered a servant Job? There ain't nobody else like him, and he ran down his resume. And Satan says, well, let me make an observation. He said, the only reason why he's doing it is because you blessed him. He said, but I tell you what, if you take the hedge, y'all miss that. Y'all need to quit playing with your phone. If, if you, if, if Satan know that God's got a hedge, what are you waiting on? It ain't about luck. You've insulted him. If he moved the hands, you would not have gotten up this morning. You would not have made it through the last storm. I thought I have some help up in here. I pray God today. I may not see the hands, but I see the effects of the hands. child of God. God, those that are saved are safe because God is with us. To say that God is with us is to say God is in a category by himself. And when we put our faith in him and when we run to him, all that seeks to defeat us, all that seeks to destroy us, remains on our side. And when God is our refuge, praise his name, nothing can touch us Nothing can hurt us, watch this, unless he allows it, yeah, yeah. unless he sends it. Yeah. And if he allows it, he's doing it for his glory and for my good. Yes, Understand, beloved, that, that, that it, it doesn't mean the trials and tough times ain't going to come. It doesn't mean difficulties aren't going to show up, but I got some good news. Do you want to hear it? Whatever happens, whatever comes in my life and yours, I praise him early on that he's got a design, a greater good, and a purpose for allowing it to come in my life. And we know that all things. Oh, yeah. I thought I need, some, I need my 15 believers of the word of God. We got a problem. Me. Everybody, 
together and you all do like this so just put both hands and just do your wrist like this. Yeah. That God, God, we ought to call according to his purpose. I praise God I'm in his will. I praise God that I love his word. I praise God I'm kept by his spirit. Do I have some help up in here? Yeah. Yes. God's strength is immediately available. It, it, ain't, it, it ain't like Amazon shoppers. If anybody, I, don't raise your hand. I'll look over here. Don't raise your hand. Some of us are shoppers on the internet and we can't wait. If you never had Amazon Prime, though you pay a price annually, you know that you can get some stuff quicker than the folk who just go on the site and they got to wait five days. I, I ordered some books a few days ago. And they came the next day. Hello, I had to wait 24 hours. I'm glad I didn't have to wait for 24 hours for God to come on my Hello, you are praising. Oh, hello. Can anybody come to heaven? Folks, you will and will not return phone calls. But every time I bow my head and call on him, he lives in me close to the child of God. And he promised I'll be with you always. Do I have a reader of scripture in the house? Always. When you're good, when you're bad, when you're right, when you're wrong, when you're up, when you're down. I'll be with you always. Do, do I have some help in the house? I'm just glad that he is always with us, with us to help us, with us to hold our hand, with us to give joy, with us to give power, with us to give healing, with us to give deliverance. Do I have any help in that? Solomon says, oh, I got hurt. Minutes now. Yes. Thank you, Lord. I'm so glad y'all didn't catch that. In my darkest hour, on my toughest day, he says, watch this, that God is a very present help in trouble. You know what, Robert, when you look at that, don't no, nothing scary. It is it's, it's, it's some folk that said, Yeah, I'll be with you. Uh, until he says, I'm going to be with you uh, too. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, there, there, there's some folk with you until, uh, uh, until your money runs out. Right. There, there's some folk with you until you make them angry. Yeah. Uh, hell, oh, come on. Come on. Come on. But I'm so glad that even when I disappoint him, he didn't divorce me. Yeah. Even when I don't do everything I ought to do, he didn't lay me off yet. Yeah. Hell, oh, in here. He's a very present him. But let me show you secondly. Not only is his strength immediately available, but his strength is overpowering. It, it, it's a tip that can be stretched over any stress. In fact, about it, can I show you something? Y'all, y'all, y'all promise y'all to say thank you, Jesus. That it's a tailor-made matter for whatever we face. You tell me what problem you got, God can't handle. You tell me what situation you're going through, God can't give you comfort and power. And furthermore, his power is not dependent, watch this, on us. Oh, uh, no, no, no. It didn't say us and God. It said God is our help. God, God being our strength means that his strength is so mighty, watch this, that it upholds us even in the most difficult times of our lives. And not only that, but he enables us to stand strong in those moments that come up against us. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Think about this, beloved. God may not keep us from everything, but he can keep us in everything. Yeah. Yeah. You know, now, you know my brother Moore already done messed up my little sermon using Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. I asked the Lord to forgive him of his sin because he didn't know no better. When he says, now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think. 
The turner is just like going to Handles and getting some butter pecan ice cream. And while you're watching, the young lady, you think once she get that big scoop and put it in, she ain't done yet. And then she goes back in. Y'all ought to go to Handles. Amen. And then she gets another scoop. And then she puts it in. But then she presses down was already there because she wants to make a little bit more room for what is yet to come. And I stood there amazed, my God, how much more are you going to give me? And God is saying, I got so much grace. I got so much mercy. You thought you saw something before. I can just keep on adding. I can just keep on piling. Ever with anybody in here ever had some moments where God just kept piling on you? You know you didn't deserve it. You know you won worthy of it for sin. But God just kept on being kind to you. God just kept on blessing. God just kept on being with you. You ought to give him a hand clap of praise. Somebody can justify that God has allowed greater good to be the outcome of not tough and trying times. It's amazing how God can take like we do quinine, a bitter substance, and he can pull and extract some sweetness out of a bitter substance. If science can take quinine and make some sweetness come out of it, don't tell me God can take your bitter experience and bring you some joy. Psalms is writing this Jerusalem matter because he knew folk were being experienced with foreign enemies attacking. But the good side is that God at the same time was protecting and preserving. Amen, belong there. Yeah, not only brothers and sisters, I'm almost done. Almost but not yet. We've got God's protection. But then finally, we got God's presence. Let, let me move the sermon quickly. Psalmist makes this declaration. He doesn't study, he doesn't stammer, he doesn't guess, he doesn't wonder, he doesn't speculate. He said God is all present. Always present. I don't know about y'all, but this is critical for me. Because what good is it for us to have a God who's got all power, but he ain't never available? What good is it to have a house built, the best wiring done, flick a switch, and ain't no light shining? <laughs> what good is God to us and for us to have all power, but he's absent and he ain't never available to help us when we need him? Uh, I don't know how you feel about it, but I thank God today that he's always available. Uh, I don't know how you feel about it. But, but, but I need somebody stronger and mightier and wiser than I am when I find myself in the trenches of life. Yes. Do I have a witness here? Yes. When I find myself in sorrow's valley, I need him. Yes. When, when I'm in stormy places and periods in my life, be it health or anything else, I need to know before they show up that God is going to be there. Yes. Yeah, I don't know about y'all, but I need him. And that's what the psalmist is alluding to and declaring here. When he mentions and echoes and uses trouble, because to have trouble means to be in a tight place. To have trouble means to be in a restricted place, to be tied up. It's a narrow, cramped spot. Anybody in here ever felt that way? You might feel like you're there right now. But as we often use the cliche, between a rock and a hard place, and ain't got no way out. Oh, I got a way out. Because God makes a way out. But that's not just the worst time that I need him, but I need him even in the best of times. Help me to remember that I didn't get here by myself. Help me to balance blessing and maintaining an humble attitude. Yeah, thank God that things might be going well for you, but you still need him. Yes, yes, you may not be going through anything now, but you still need him. And that's why the psalmist follows up with a second truth about God where he says, a very present help in trouble. You know, God, I'm going to walk through this and then I'll be out of your way. He, he's not just a help. He's not just some help. Look at what the text says. A very present help in trouble. So now can I show it to him? Because that very small word, very, carries a whole lot of weight here in the text. It literally means, Sister Autumn, extremely. 
Yes, immediately. He said, what are you talking about? Well, what are you saying about God is simply this. That God is immediately present. God is immediately available. He's in our lives. And he, he's not there just to say he's there. He ain't there just to be present. He is present to help us. I don't know what y'all, but that's good news. I, I need him to be present. Many of us who are here, we got some folks that are around us, but they're not immediately available. I, I, I don't know about you, but some of us got some friends that are available on their availability. And thank God that I ain't never had to have a secretary call and say, he'll be back with you uh, two weeks from now. Somebody in here knows about the aggravation of having a toothache or an ache in your body. And you're calling your physician. And you're telling them, I've got an immediate pain, pain or problem. Somebody come on and help me. And you call the office. Hello, again. Somebody. Joe, hello. I don't mind poor pain and pew participation. You call that you're in immediate pain and you want immediate relief. And the secretary says, let me check your schedule. And he says, well, he won't or she won't be available in the until next week. Okay, tell that to my problem now. Tell that to my pain now. I wish I could tell my pain. Listen up, listen up, listen up uh, uh, He won't be available until next Thursday. Can you just lighten up and wait? And then you can show up, go full throttle. Uh -uh, it don't work that way. Some of us know right now. Wait, wait. No, I need it now. I, I need relief now. I need help now. Can I tell you, child of God, that I thank you that it ain't a matter of waiting the next week. It ain't a matter of waiting for waiting. No, no. God is available right now. And that's what the psalmists are saying. Folk are coming at me. Problems on every hand. But I thank God he's immediately available. Yeah. Yeah, God is present. Well, present to do what preaching? He's in place. He's in place to lift us, support us, undergird us. He is there. And know this while we're talking that, that God being present also means, watch this, that we got all of Him and not part of Him. Yeah, a very present Him. Is also say that God is also on sight in our lives. He ain't distant. He ain't using binoculars. He's not anticipating or waiting to sit. He, he, he's there right now. And so the psalmist is telling us that there's nobody else who is like him. No, nobody greater. And, and that would be saying here. Nobody greater than. Then you, yes. hello, come on, uh, hello in here, somebody. And we, you know what, we ain't singing it just because it's a nice song. We're singing it as a statement of faith. No, nobody, nobody, nobody like you, Lord. When trouble comes, nobody like you. Yes, sickness shows up, we, we can tell him. No, nobody, nobody heals like you. No, nobody delivers like you. Thank you, Lord. That you will never present him in a time of trouble. No, nobody comforts like he. No, nobody consoles like he. Nobody comforts and protects like he. I'm glad to report to you today that, that we've got a God on our side because he is with us. That he's a very present help. Yes, and because he is a present help. That that is to say that he is and he alone he is the only one who is master of our circumstances. He alone he is majestic. He alone he is sovereign. He alone he is in control. And, and he does this in so much more, more than we know, more than we can imagine. However, the psalmist is very clear when he says that in the time of trouble, I'm not sure where you are today, 
maybe things are well, maybe you're in a utopia, maybe it's 70 degrees in your circumstance and there are no clouds in the sky. But can I assure you that man born of a woman is only of a few days and full of trouble. Trouble will find all of us. But I'm so glad before trouble and trial show up that I already have God on my side. I don't have to sit him on my trouble. He's already at work. Do I have a witness in the house? I don't have to ask him to show up. He's already on sight. On sight to lift us. On sight to help us. On sight to give us peace of mind. To know that we might endure for a night. But joy is showing up on the way. Somebody asked a question one time. Why is it that it's only an overnight problem for trouble and trial to come against us? Because whenever trouble and trial show up, they don't come in a foot locker. They come in an overnight case because they know that joy is on the way. Look at somebody on your road and say to them, I don't know what you're going through. But we are sure that joy is showing up on the way. It might be dark right now, but joy is showing up on the way. Am I right about it? And Brother Beck, we used to sing the joy that I have. The world didn't give it to me, and the world can't take it away. The peace that I have, the world didn't give it to me, and the world can't take it away. I'm glad to report to you today that he's proven himself over a course of days, months, and years. Do I have a witness in the house of the Lord? He ain't just start showing up, he's been showing up. Am I right about it? And maybe you go to sleep, but can I ask you a question? Who was it that healed your body the last time you were sick? Who was it that brought you out of the hospital the last time you were there? Who was it that kept the hellhounds away from devouring you? Who was it that kept the sharpshooters ahead from running you down? I've got the answer. Nobody but the Lord. Am I right about it? And somebody can say today that he lives an old time God. Oh, yes, he is. Never made it and never too early. Give somebody a high five and tell them no matter what's going on. Yes, he will. He will. He will take care of you. Am I right about it? He'll hold your hand and walk by your side. Do I have a witness? And every time I fall down, he is there. Thank you, Lord.